Hello, I'm Scott Turner. I want to welcome you to my online series on evolution. Evolution is concerned with the history of life on Earth. During the Earth's nearly four and a half billion years, life has changed dramatically. Life has a history, in other words, and a remarkable history at that. The subject of evolution has a broad scope. It includes building an accurate description of life's evolutionary history from its origin to the present. This is largely the province of paleontology, although genetic analysis has been playing a larger and larger role in this. Evolution also includes understanding why life has a history. How does evolution work? Why is it that life evolves? In this series, we're going to take a look at all of these aspects, but let me be upfront. This will not be a conventional exploration of the topic, and let me tell you why. I'm a physiologist. That means I'm concerned with how life works. My own research has been mostly on the physiology of adaptation, which is how living things fit well into the environments in which they live. Mostly, this has been done on the social physiology of termite colonies. What's really motivated me, though, is a question. What does physiology, the science of how life works, have to say about evolution, that is, how life changes? The two might seem to be entirely separate topics. In fact, that's how they're usually taught. Physiology courses over here and evolution courses over there. But they cannot be separated. No credible theory of evolution can divorce how life evolves from how life works. Pursuing this question has led me into some heterodox thoughts about evolution. When I started my career, I was a pretty staunch Darwinist. Now, 30 years later, I no longer am. I've concluded that the Darwinian idea simply doesn't add up. That's the unconventional perspective I will bring to this series. I'm going to tell you why I have come to my heterodox thoughts. I'll also outline my own alternative explanation for what drives evolution. Here's a hint. It's not Darwinism, and it's not creationism either. There's another reason I'm offering this series. Evolution, in particular Darwinism, is a cultural flashpoint. This is not surprising. Evolution has some deep things to say about our nature, our place in the natural world, and even our religious faith. These are challenging issues. It's no surprise then that there's a lot of fighting that goes on over evolution, how we should think about it, how we should act upon it, how we should teach it, and indeed whether we should even teach it at all. One thing I hope you'll learn in this series is just how unnecessary all this contention and conflict is, unnecessary at least if we're thinking about evolution correctly. My claim will be that we have been thinking about it incorrectly for a very long time, and that's why we fight about it so strenuously. If we do think about it correctly, though, we'll find there's a common ground where people on all sides of the social issue of evolution can come together in a constructive way. We'll all be richer for it, and it's my hope that I can convince you of this. Again, thanks for visiting. I hope I've piqued your interest enough so that you will join me in this intellectual journey.